Hey everybody, it's Andrew here with Vicariously. Uh, today we got our first snowfall, we got a few inches, so I figured now would probably be the best time of any to do a bike check of my Santa Cruz Hightower LT and also a long-term review on it. So I've had it for just over a year, so I've had a lot of good experiences uh, with it in terms of the good and the bad, and we will go over everything. So um, hang on, and uh, when we get back, we'll go through everything. Okay, so a little backstory of the bike. Um, I purchased this as a frame uh, at the end of 2017. Uh, it replaced a standard, uh, my black, orange, and mint uh, Hightower, which was also a great bike. Um, I'll be posting a video comparing those two bikes, um, the Hightower and Hightower LT as well. It's been a popular question. So, um, so Built it as a frame up, it's gone through, I'd say, a few different phases um, that I will share in the long-term review part of it. So let's go over the parts. So we'll start with the drivetrain, uh, or excuse me, we'll start with the cockpit and kind of work our way down. Uh, so um, so right now I run a Renthal a cockpit. So I have the Fat Bar Light Carbons, uh, which is 760 millimeters in width. Uh, that's uncut, I just keep it at the 760 and the apex stem to match, which is 40 millimeters in length. And this is the 35 millimeter clamp size. So um, actually I just switched from the alloy uh, fat bar 35, which is 800 millimeters in width. Uh, so I actually uh, shortened, uh, shortened the uh, length a little bit there. So I also run out the one up EDC tool. I think that's uh, an amazing little piece of kit there. Um, to finish things off, I also run uh, the Tioga Spider Outland saddle, which is kind of like that cheese grater saddle that everybody's scared of. And I also run a Bike Yoke Revive uh, dropper post, uh, which I believe is the 185 millimeter in length. So um, it's been a while since I looked that up. Um, so next, let's talk about the uh, suspension. So I have the Fox 36 uh, factory. Um, this is the Kashima coated, Kashima coated. Um, grip 2 version uh, travel is set at 170 millimeters. Uh, now that wasn't something that I consciously set to do, it's just how it had to be to get the combination of offset um, and the orange lowers. So 44 millimeter offset for the crown um, combined with the 170 millimeter uh, travel and the orange lowers, that was the package I was stuck with. I was gonna actually convert it right down to 160, but I decided to give the 170 a try, um, and I liked it. And I'll kind of go over that more on the long-term review part of it as well and how that works out. Uh, for the shock, I have the Push 11.6, which is their kind of uh, Uber uh, coil. Uh, I have a downhill and a pedal mode on there, which I do um, use quite a bit. Uh, with the coil. Um, wheels and tires, uh, I have the Industry 9 Enduro 305s. Um, they're, uh, it's their high-end aluminum wheel set. Uh, it has their kind of fancy aluminum spokes and the loud clicky hub. Um, I run the tire insert, which is Kushcore, and for the tires themselves, I have the new Hans Domp in the back and the Magic Mary up front. Um, both in the 2.35 width, and I would say probably to date that is my favorite tire combination that I've tried um, out of all the ones. So, um, moving down to the drivetrain, it's standard uh, Fox XL1 Eagle. So I got the carbon crank sets uh, at 170 millimeters of length. Um, you got the uh, 1050 wide range cassette out back with the shifters to match and the derailleur. Um, and for the pedals, I have the Crank Brother Mallet Enduros. So I uh, really love those pedals. Um, so some personal touches with the bike. Uh, I run um, the uh, Wolf Tooth Components strap that uh, carries my um, Dynaplug uh, tire plugger and also my tube. Um, I also run a real world cycling uh, needle bearing bushing in the back of the push shock. I've always ran one of those probably in the past couple years since my Giant, which had all bearing pivots anyway. Um, I feel like on this bike, with how little the front uh, pop, the front shock rotates, I just did the back and really enjoyed how that works out. Um, 
I have the one up components uh, bash guide and top guide. Uh, and I like to take uh, electrical tape and clean up my cables um, so that they're kind of nice and tight. So just kind of little nitpicky things um, in terms of cleaning that up. Um, and also to protect the frame, I have uh, two kits of the All Mountain style um, frame guard. I use it on the top tube and on the down tube, and then I sprinkle some of it kind of wherever it needs it. So, um, so that's the bike. Um, I have love it. And I'll kind of go over now the long-term review aspect of it and uh, all the different phases that it's gone. All right, now the long-term review. Um, so I've had this bike again for a little over a year. Uh, in terms of quality of the bike, it really doesn't get much easier. Again, what I love about the Santa Cruz bikes is the ease of maintenance. They use third bottom bracket cups, so it's really easy to diagnose uh, creaks. Um, and uh, clean those up. Uh, probably the most annoying part is cleaning the VPP link. So because everything is so tucked in there, um, if you're not careful, it can get pretty dirty and gunky in there. I had to clean it out once and it was, uh, in terms of the bearings, they were fine, but it was just so gunky in there. So that's probably the most annoying thing about the bike. But uh, luckily, if you just kind of spray some water in there after a muddy or dirty ride and just clean it out as much as possible, um, it stays uh, fairly clean. So, um, yeah, I would say probably the biggest issue I've had is just after long uh, days at the bike park, if it's really dusty, um, I kind of do get developed creaks halfway through the day. Um, maybe that's the same for most bikes, I don't know, but uh, just a little annoying things like that. But in terms of the frame quality, um, it has held up uh, excellent. I've had a couple crashes and it's, it's held up just fine paint finish and everything um, you know I would say you know as long as you're not scratching it and things like that will hold up the test of time so uh, in terms of the rideability um, so this bike has kind of seen a few different forms or phases so when I first bought the bike it had uh, the RockShox Thuric with the Charger 2 damper and the Float X2 I didn't ride that combination very much uh, actually um, because shortly after I built the bike which was kind of still in the winter time uh, I decided to move away from the Lyric and put a DVO Diamond. Um, so I rode the DVO Diamond uh, at 160 millimeters of length with the Float X2 um, for a good majority of the time. And I would say that combination uh, was really good. Um, pros about the DVO Diamond, um, it, very good small bump sensitivity and very tunable with that off the top. Um, and it almost felt to me more coil-like of any air fork that I've ridden. So um, what eventually happened with the DBO is I kind of ran into what I felt was some quality control issues and I decided to kind of move on from the DBO fork and at that time the uh, new Grip 2 Fox stuff was coming out so I decided to make a change. Um, and yeah, so the as it looks now, the Fox 36 with the Grip 2, um, I'm running this at 170 millimeters of length uh, for travel. Um, that's just how the fork came to get the combination of the orange uh, offset that I wanted to try. Um, you had to get it at 170. So um, is 170 too much for the bike? I don't think so. Um, a lot of people will say, oh, it'll, you know, slacken everything out, like c tube and head angle wise. And yes, it does, but um, maybe something that you don't realize is like, yes, and sitting right here as it stands, it looks really slack and maybe unrideable. But uh, when you're sagged in, um, you know, at 20%, if you like to set your sag based off of percentage, um, uh, the difference between 20% of 160 and 170 millimeters is actually like two and a half, three millimeters. So it's not too much different. So when you're actually in riding position, sagged in on the fork, it doesn't feel that much different at all. And I know you're not going to stay in that state the whole time you're riding the bike, but more often than not, you're in that state more than you are just sitting like this. So 170 millimeters, I liked it. And I'm gonna keep it that way probably until, I don't know. So, 
Um, so with uh, that, then came the Push 11.6 shock that replaced the Float X2. And I would say for this particular bike, I know it's really expensive, but it's probably one of the best things you can do um, really uh, for this bike. It really unlocks kind of that dead feel that sometimes you get with the VPP. It kind of makes it a little bit more uh, reactive under your feet. Um, that uh, paired with the needle bearing bushing that I like to add on there, um, it's just a great performing bike. Um, I almost feel like it has more mid-stroke support than my Float X2 did. Um, I know you can really tune the the Float X2 to however you want, but um, the way I had my Float X2 set up and the way the guys at Push set up the 11.6, I feel like this has a little bit more mid-stroke support, uh, but still not as much uh, in stroke support, obviously, because it's a coil. Um, and you do feel a bottom out or hit that top out bumper um, every now and then on flatter landings, uh, but it's never anything harsh or you feel like you're damaging or you're gonna break something, so. Um, really love the Push 11.6 on this. If you have the opportunity to get one on sale or use or whatever, I would highly recommend it. Um, I do know people that have put the DHX2 uh, coil on there uh, with some really good luck as well. Um, I've heard that's not necessarily the greatest thing with heavier riders. I'm like just over 200 with uh, riding gear on. Um, and the fact that, you know, I just get a custom tune shock for me uh, works out really well. So. Um, in terms of downhill performance with the coil and the Fox 36, very composed, just eats everything up. You have traction climbing, you have traction descending. Um, it's not quite as glued to the ground like, um, like velcro -y as uh, some other coil setups that I've had with the Push and other bikes, but um, it's really close and still retains some pop. So, um, so overall, um, I really like it. Uh, it's the bike that I'm going to continue to ride into uh, 2019. I don't have my eye on anything else. So uh, if you have any questions about my setup or the bike or any particular component or bit about it, just let me know. Um, I enjoy having conversations with each and every one of you. Um, and yeah, you know, if uh, you, know, you want to chat or just you know, talk, let me know. So uh, thanks for hanging out with me and going over my Hightower LT. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Oh,